All right, hail hey and welcome everyone to tonight's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. If this is your first time, my name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. Uh, every week I upload a video that covers various topics of Norse heathenry, um, anything that typically will strike my interest or fancy at the time, some interest, uh, so, some, some content that is of interest to folks that kind of send stuff my way. Um, and then there's also plenty of, uh, you know, sort of series type content that gets published here. You're going to see a playlist section down in the channel. Um, you can go to that playlist section and see all the various content that has been uploaded there. There is a uh, Hovamal discussion that was uploaded over time. Um, there's a deity discussion series. There is a sort of storytelling series that I call Bragi's Corner. And now here tonight we are in the continuation of the Nine Pieces of Eight, uh, A Pathway of Studying the Runes series. It's a nine episode series, okay? Last week, which I will annotate in a card up in the right corner of your screen, you can check the first episode out. It was just kind of an intro and, you know, uh, informational type video about what this series will be talking about. And tonight, uh, and the next eight episodes of this series, we will be talking about the runes specifically. Um, and there are 24 Elder Fugart runes, and so therefore we will be doing three runes per episode going forward in this series. So we got three runes per eight uh, episodes of the series to conclude the 24 Elder Fugart uh, runes. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching tonight, uh, or today, or this morning, or wherever it is that you are in Midgard, uh, please be sure to subscribe to the channel if it, this is something that you are interested in uh, seeing further, be sure to click the bell notifications, that way you get notified every time I upload new content. Alright, so before we start this uh, episode, we're going to go ahead and light our candle and incense, which is off screen, but there will be some incense burning, so that this is just kind of a... Uh, you know, tradition for the channel, something that we like to do to kind of give some ambiance and uh, that sort of thing. And we'll get the incense going. As soon as it takes, there we go. I like to call to your attention, I'll, I'll, I'll leave some information down in the, uh, in the end screen, or not in the end screen, but down in the description of the video. Um, for this particular candle burner and incense burner, um, this was this was gifted to me by Jim Olufsen of uh, Heathen's Greetings U.S. Okay, uh, he does a lot of wonderful um, wood craftings, wood burnings, things that he uh, takes off of his own property. This is a wonderful, beautiful piece. You guys can sort of see. Um, this is a candle burner, uh, incense, candle holder incense burner, right? And, uh, it's got a representation of the Jormungandr, okay, the, the, the Midgard serpent wrapping around the base of this, uh, of this beautiful wood burner piece. So check out the description of the video for his Etsy store. Uh, Facebook page, all that stuff is going to be linked down in the description, so be sure to check all that out. Um, everybody that's watching live on Facebook, even though I can't see you right now and I apologize, please be sure to check out Heathen's Greetings, U.S. Jim Olufsen, wonderful stuff. Um, so there you go. Alright guys, so like I said, um, last week's episode was kind of an introductory, ep introductory episode to the Rune Study series. And so we're going to be going into a more in-depth discussion about each room uh, for the next eight weeks. Um, and so because of that, because there are 24 runes in the Elder Fugark uh, rune set, if you will, there will be three runes per episode, okay? Um, and the first, of the first three uh, runes in the Elder Fugark set we're going to be talking about tonight. And the first one will be Fehu. Alright. And uh, Fehu, uh, which literally would be translated to meaning as cattle, 
is a rune that represents or means uh, mobile property, new beginnings, wealth, and also luck. Okay? Um, there's also some uh, annotation, or, or connotations with the rune of a circulation of power, and it tends to quite often be uh, recognized or, or connected to Freyr. Uh, because Freyr is being the god of fertility, the god of uh, agriculture especially, um, a god that is, was recognized in the Archeven times as one who was venerated during a, the new season after the, 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 you know, the waning of winter into the beginning of the growing months of the year. Um, Freyr was uh, quite often associated with this room, at least from what we can from what we can tell. Um, so we have, again, mobile property, new beginnings, wealth. Um, I have personally taken the, uh, the meaning of fehu to mean a lot more than just um, monetarial mobile property. I, I, I have personally um, felt that it can mean uh, things that pertain to um, you know, things that mean value to us. You know, wealth can mean things more than just we put our hands on. Wealth means more than just money, more than just property, more than just monetarial things, right? Wealth can mean things that we can carry with us. So I look at things as knowledge and wisdom, um, things that we can um, bring to the value of our community, uh, things that we can carry with us in the growth of our respective communities to be associated with Fehu. Um, and so let me just say, guys, as, as, as you're watching this and as I say things about these specific rooms, I am, no, I am by no means saying that this is the entire meaning of these rooms. There, there is tons of knowledge, there's tons of sources that you can tap into um, for the study of the rooms. There's uh, several books, you know, uh, Edward Thorson, uh, Diane Paxton, Lisa Pichel. There's there's wonderful sources out there. I'll try to link some stuff down in the description of the video to kind of give you some insight um, of ways that you can go and, and, and sources that you can look into. Um, but this is just this this series, this study series is going to be something that I am imparting my understanding of the runes uh, into, and then inviting your insight and your you know, your, your own experiences to share with the rest of us, okay? You know, so we have, like I said, Fehu, cattle. Cattle, the reason why cattle was, rep you know, associated or representing to wealth is because in Archeathan times, you know, that was a form of how you, well you were valued. Did you, you know, how many cattle did you have? And, and, and it, it, was, it was a form of currency. It was a form of um, exchange of wealth, you know, if you had this many cattle, you were deemed to be valuable at a certain level, this sort of thing. Um, but it represents now in modern heathen times, I guess you could say that the the uh, the seeking of wealth. You know, if, if you're looking to in, in, in incorporate wealth into your uh, practices, or, or not necessarily practices, but in in terms of your life, if you're if you're looking to increase wealth, if you're looking to um, add wealth to your practices. Fehu is a rune that you will want to perhaps work with, and if you see it um, pulled up in a drawing or casting, then that that is some of the things that you will want to look at uh, in terms of its esoteric representation. Okay. Uh, the next rune is Urus. Uh, which is literally the oryx, the wild cattle, the 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 wild um, bovine of the realm that we tend to the northern European the, the wild oxen, if you will. Fehu represents the domesticated cattle, the, the 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 cattle that were kept in domestication for um, meat and for other purposes. Um, you know, working the grounds and things. The Oryx were, the Urus, uh were the wild cattle 
they didn't have the domestication. They, were, they weren't kept within the, the homestead or the farmstead. Um, and they represent endurance, um, you know, uh, formation, manifestation, wild, untamed forces, if you will. Um, it's quite often represented to uh, be associated with uh, strong health. Um, the natural power of resistance, because it's, it's got a bit of a, the, that wild element, you know, so the, the, the natural development of, of being able to withstand the natural forces that come about, that, that natural ability to withstand that. And uh, it is quite often a rune that is associated with Thor. And um, male fertility, male um, vitality... All right, it's got a very masculine sort of aura around it, I guess you could say. Um, perseverance, you know, um, facing challenges, taking action, um, forces of change, things that are, are just wild and reckless in their nature um, that, that you can embrace, you know, um, and, and work towards your own good. This is the nature of Ulrus that I've personally seen in, in rune castings and drawings in my own life. And uh, things that tend to surround the meaning of this room, you know. Um, uh, me personally being uh, the type of heathen that likes to uh, work and, you know, deal with Thor specifically. Um, a lot of folks that may be watching this will have specific deities that they want to focus on. I am personally one that likes to focus on Thor, uh, personality-wise, and uh, his de demeanor and lore, um, and given the fact that he's the protector and defender of Midgard. Uh, he is the one who I like to focus on and work with a lot, and this rune is one that embodies his essence, if you will, at least from what I've seen. Um, the next rune that we're going to be telling, the last rune in this particular episode that we're going to be talking about is Thurisas, the thorn. All right. And this is also a rune that is very closely associated to Thor uh, because of its uh, essence of resistance and protection and defense. Um, it's also associated with the chaotic forces of the Thurs, uh, which is the giant Jotun essence, that, 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 that kind of essence of chaos, that essence of destruction. Um, but it's the natural destruction, the natural, you know, um, kind of like when the hurricanes or the tornadoes or the storms come through in, in, in Midgard and we see these natural forms of destruction. It's coming through to destroy, uh, but there's a reason for it. There's a reason behind it. It, it, it. What what destroys leads to growth, and it leads to um, a newness, if you will. Um, Thurisas quite often represents the, the, the chaos that is manifest by breaking through barriers. There, there needs to be destruction. There needs to be, you know, some, some sort of destroying element because of a barrier that is in place. And then once that barrier is taken down and destroyed, uh, newness and, and growth can come forth, you know. Um, so it has a representation of the thorn or the hammer, uh, which is, again, closely associated with Thor. And... Uh, that that aggression, that that unabridged destruction, uh, is is not a destruction that just wipes out completely and leaves nothing for growth. It, it is it is the it's, it's kind of like the wildfire. I look at it as the wildfire of the forest that that burn acres and acres and acres of land to get rid of the dead and make room for the living. Okay. Um, Again, it's, it's a rune that can be used for protection and defense. Uh, it, it's something that you can, um, when, when you see it uh, pulled up in a rune, casting or drawing may Im 
you know, may indicate that there is a need for defense and a need for protection and a need for action. You know, because the way Thor is, is that he's, you know, action first, questions later type of guy. Um, and there's, there's not much need for initial thought. It's take action. You know, be defensive, be protective, and be proactive in your defense. Um, more, more of an offensive type of way. Um, not that you're just standing back there and shielding against the, the forces that are coming, but you're going out there and you're attacking the forces that come against you. All right. Um, so that is the conclusion of this week's episode of the Nine Pieces of Eight, episode two. For Fehu, Urus, and Thurisas, I'm anxious to hear what everyone has to say with their own particular workings with these specific runes. All right, guys, this is a rune study series. What I say, what I kind of, uh, you know, include in my dissertation, if you will, um, about this whole thing is not meant to be like, take what I say and run with it. There's plenty of knowledge out there. There's plenty of workings out there. And it is going to be something that as you as an individual begin to work with the runes and begin to understand the runes that you will get to a bit of more of a working knowledge with them because they are so organic in their nature. You know what I mean? The, the, the root understandings or the root meanings behind the runes um, grow. They grow with us as individuals, they grow with us as communities, and the things that the runes represent individually can sometimes change and develop based on the runes around them that are drawn and that are cast and that are, that are worked upon, right? So it's not meant to be like what you read about in this particular rune is that it's that thing. It's not a static thing. It's, it's an organic growing thing. You have to understand the runes entirely as they're kind of worked upon, right? And that's, again, that, that's my interpretation. That's my understanding of it. That's how I work with the runes. It's one casting is going to be different from the next casting, um, regardless of the runes that come up, because sometimes the runes will display themselves in ways that mean something different based on the runes around them versus this other casting, all right? So, again, it's, it's, it's an entirely organic thing, and they will be things that I say right now that may not make sense necessarily to what you've seen the runes working in, but then again, maybe later on they may. Um, or previously, they, things that you've heard I say now make sense, and then, uh, you know, previously, and then now they're going to be, well, it's a little bit different. So I'm anxious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, please drop your comments down below. Let me know how it is um, that you kind of work with the runes, and then tune in next week for the next three rune sets. Um, everybody that watches live on Facebook, let me just tell you right now that there will not be a live discussion, all right, because everybody that watches on, on YouTube doesn't necessarily always tune in live on Sunday nights for the uh, live discussion on Facebook. Next week, I will actually be out of state and visiting family, but there will be content. There will, there will be a video uploaded next week uh, for the next three rune series. So everybody that watches on YouTube, it'll be there. Everybody that watches live on Facebook, we're not going to be doing a live discussion next week because I'm going to be out of state visiting family. But there will be content uploaded, and I hope you guys tune in and watch for that. And I hope everybody that watches on YouTube will have already, if you haven't already, been a subscriber and have your bell notifications turned on so that way you know what's going on every time I upload it. And... Um, There'll be some other stuff coming out throughout this week. I know I talked to you guys, uh, I think it was last week or so, about the proposition of live content coming up on the YouTube channel. Um, that's all still stuff that I'm trying to work out. All the specifics, that's all getting worked on. So there'll be stuff coming out about that. And a lot of fun other contents too, all right? Not just what you see every week, but other... Um, videos that I have planned, um, some collaboration things, some perhaps interviews uh, with other heathens in the area. A lot of cool stuff, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thank you all so much for watching tonight. I appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You'll see all kinds of uh, end screen 
information, make sure you click on the subscribe button, follow the page, follow uh, the Instagram. It's all going to be down in the description. If you haven't already, support Midgard Musings in any way you can. Really appreciate all the support that we get. Thank you all so much for watching on Facebook. Stick around so that way I can uh, address everybody specifically at the end of the video. And thank you all uh, for watching the YouTube channel and watching these videos, supporting them in any way. It, it means a lot. Share them around. Tag your heathen friends. Uh, let me know what you would like to see from this channel. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. I'm all open for constructive criticism. All right? So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next week in the next video. Hail and thank you.